Hey class, today we are on lesson 151 in your math books. So go ahead and get your math books out and turn to lesson 151. It is on page 157 and looks like this. So that's what we're working on together today. At the very top of this lesson um, are the pink boxes and it says write the numbers and then it has one day equals blank hours one week equals blank days so how many hours equals one day one day equals how many hours how many hours are in a day if you said 24 you're exactly right i'll go ahead and write that on the board as an example one day equals 24 hours. Let's go over a few more of these. Hmm. I think you probably know how many days are in a week. How about how many weeks are in a year? One year equals how many weeks? That's the third one. How many weeks? If you said 52, you're right. And then Next, it says one pound equals how many ounces? How many ounces are in a pound? That's something you haven't been learning quite as long. So think about that. One pound equals 16 ounces. So if you said 16, you're exactly right. And then we have hours and minutes, minutes and seconds and years and months. And then the very last one over in that second pink rectangle says one ton equals how many pounds? We'll do that together. One ton equals how many pounds? It's a lot of pounds. If you said 2,000, you're exactly right. One ton is 2,000 pounds. Part two you have different solid shapes and you are to label them with the correct name. So you're supposed to write the name of each shape. I have them up here on the board. And if you want to pause, these aren't in the right order, but it shows you how to spell each one. And if you want to pause the video for a minute and write the names under those shapes while you have the, have the words up there spelled correctly, you can do that. Part three, you're adding Part four, you are subtracting. I know you're going to do a great job with all of that. In part five, you're writing the time. You're going to look at those clocks and write the correct time. So that first clock is blue, and it has the shorthand between the 12 and the 1, and then the long hand on the 7. Which one of those hands is your hour hand? The short one is, that's right. The short hand is the hour hand and the long hand is called the what? The minute hand, right? So it is, what is the hour? If that hour hand is between the 12 and the one, what hour are we in? That's right, it's the 12th hour. It's 12 something, right? We're not quite to one o'clock. It's 12 something, so let's count by fives around to see 12 what? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. That means it's 12:35 right there on that first clock. Just to kind of get you in the groove with your time. Let's look at part six together. You have a graph and you are to write the point of intersection for each of those dots. So that first dot is down at the very bottom. I didn't draw the graph on the board today because I had a lot of stuff that needed to go up there. I needed some space. So that first dot is down at the very bottom of the graph, and that is on line D going up, right? Line D. And what line is intersecting with line D right there at that point? Line O. So you're going to write, or line zero, not O, you're going to write D zero in that first blank, just like this. Because lines D and zero intersect at point one. It looks like the word do, doesn't it? But that's D zero. On point two, right here, 
what two lines intersect at point two? Look at it in your book and think about that. So we have line E going up is on point two, and the line, other line coming through point two is one. So we're going to write what for point two? What are the lines intersecting right there? E, one. Just like that. You're going to do the rest of them like that, and then you get to do a dot to dot. You get to connect the dots in order. Part seven is ratios. So you are going to write the ratios of these different types of sports balls. So the first one says soccer balls to baseballs. So you're going to count the number of soccer balls first. One, two, three, four. And that goes first in your blank. Soccer balls, two baseballs. So how many baseballs are there? Yes, there are five baseballs. So you've got four, two, five right there. Four soccer balls to five baseballs. Remember, keep them in the right order. On part eight, you are going to be multiplying by your fours and by nines. And so I thought we'd do some of the first ones together. So we have nine times five equals 45. I've got the answers on the board. I was just thinking about the fact that the answers are right there for you, right over here. So I was going to show you a little trick with our nines, 45. Nine times three is, nine times three is 27. And nine times six is 54. And we'll stop there, because I want to show you this over here. See this? I've written the nines out for you. Nine times, I didn't do nine times zero. But nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times three equals 27. Nine times four equals 36. Nine times five equals 45. And it keeps going. You can look at that for a second. Does anybody notice a pattern with these? Other than each one is nine more than the one before. What do you see with these numbers? It's very interesting. Okay, so if you look at the ones column, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, just looking at the ones column, three, two, one, zero. So the ones column is counting down, right? Now let's look at the tens column. We've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's the tens column doing? It's counting up, isn't it? So I thought that was just a little neat trick with your nines now that you're working with those more and more. And that's all that's left in your math. You have four, you do your four multiplication and you will be done today.